Vince is going to be so impressed with how organized my my hard drive still is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Only because it's a new computer. But I want to show you a picture because this is what we're going to work on to start, okay? And I'm getting used to Windows 8, Meg. I'm not a happy Windows 8 camper. Okay. I'm still on XP. <laughs> yeah, I kept my XP computer. I'm going to zoom in. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this was done. Remember I told you we're going to work with the wing needle. And the whole trick right. of working with the wing needle is, you know, if you look, you can kind of see there's two threads here. Mm -hmm. The whole point is if you just did like one thread, like a little diamond, it might poke holes in your fabric, but it wouldn't really poke holes in your fabric, right? Mm -hmm. It requires the thread to pull. Okay, and this is these are all stitches that are already built in. And right, uh, do you learning uh -huh. when you do this, what color bobbin do you use? Um, I I just used a regular bobbin because I was just stitching them off real quick. To be honest, so you use, I mean, what kind of thread do you use on your bobbin? Um, you could if you wanted to. It depends on your fabric. Okay, if you're going to be using like a lightweight, uh, you know, this is cotton. If you're going to use like a lightweight fabric, uh -huh. you normally do, you might want to match that bobbin thread with the top thread color. Mm. You know, so, and usually if you're doing like pink batiste, right, you're well, going to have... I would anyway. Right, you'd have pink, pink thread, but, you know, you want to match that like you would on your sewing machine if you were doing it. Because that's going to, you know, that color is going to show through a little bit. But I just wanted to run a, a quick little test stitch. And um, to give you an idea, this is cotton. It's not linen. It's not batiste. So I would get probably a little more drama mm -hmm. if I used a lighter weight fabric and, you know, like a nice 50 weight cotton thread. Mm -hmm. Hey, now. This is, this is just like a cotton pacal, like a. a Yes, it is, like a pillowcase. Yeah, Kona cotton. And you can see, I'm going to send you these pictures, okay? I wrote the pattern numbers down, which will make more sense to you in a minute, okay? But I wanted mm -hmm. to show you these, okay? And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so they don't get too blurry. How's that? And, you know, yeah. uh -huh. no, but you blurry. can see, you know, like where the holes are here, right? Mm -hmm. Which stitches are a little more dramatic? And, you know, and again, that's with, the wing, that's with the wing needle. That's with the wing needle. You get those holes from the wing needle. All right. Okay. Now, what, out, what if you use just a big needle? Um, you won't One get cup. as much drama. Oh, because you've got a double needle. Well, no, the wing needle is the one that looks like literally it has like a sword, like blades on the side. And it, it shouldn't. Right cut your fabric, what it, it those blades actually aren't sharp. It's supposed to go between the weave and push the hole open and move that fabric. Which is so why you did not use it I'm sorry? You didn't use a twin needle here. No, no, wing You needle. did not use a no wing. Wing a needle. Wing needle. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, for embroidery, I have not ever had enough nerve to put a twin needle in my embroidery machine, and I would be very nervous doing that. And you know, I you, did. Well, you're braver than I am because it depends on, like, you know, I have depends on your machine, right? Some of them, you know, if you look, some of those machines, the needle's actually moving now. It's not mm. just the pantograph. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. that needle is moving, too. And depending on the machine, like, you know, the Elna machine, I think, goes to the center. But, like, the, the Janome and, and I'm trying to remember what other brand goes off to the mm -hmm. uh, left side, right? So that needle would just slam into your foot, right? So I haven't ever been brave enough to try that. But anyway, I'll send you a picture of these. And I did write these down. And we're going to go through some of these. But I also want to show you the second one. Let me see if I can just forward through. There we go. Okay, this is the second one where, you know, those little patterns that we have, those F patterns? I decided mm -hmm. to get brave and play with some of those, too. And you can see some of them just don't 
do well. Like this one, F0057, is not doing well because, let me see if I can zoom in and show you why. Well, it has like the, the thread pooling, right? It, it's just not backtracking over it like some of these other ones, OK? Is this on the machine or in the expressive? No, it's in the expressive software. Oh, I'm, I'm just trying to get my head around it. Yep, OK. Yeah, these are the stitches that are in the expressive. So I thought, OK, I'll run a, a little test stitch. And you know, if I really wanted a little more drama, I might have you know, loosened my upper tension to let that pull a little bit tighter. Or, you know, or maybe tightened. It depends, you know, it depends on the stitch and depends on how your machine's going to behave. But cotton mm. thread is going to pull a little bit more. But the size... The embroidery. Mm. Right, then the embroidery thread. Because, you know, I use rayon. You guys know I use rayon. Polyester would probably pull a little bit more, too. But, you know, some mm. of these stitches weren't too bad. Some of them were just uh, okay, right? But let me go ahead and close that. And I'll tell you something that... that you will find humorous, Meg. I was playing with these, and I couldn't figure out why they wouldn't show up on the screen. And I'll show you what was going on, right? Let me uh, mm -hmm. turn this off. I was, you know, I got my nice little line, right? Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why they weren't showing up. I'm going up into the settings. I'm telling it I want a patterned fill or programmed fill. You know, I'm picking my pattern. I'm saying OK. And I'm thinking, oh, that stinking Windows 8, right? Well, mm -hmm. then I thought, okay, no, I tried it with Show the stitches. Bills. Yeah, <laughs> show the stitches. So if you guys get to the position where... Obviously, I've been there before. <laughs> well, you know, Gloria is kind of a little new to the program. So if you get into the position, Hi, Gloria, Gloria, where Hello. You know, like, you're seeing no stitches and you're just seeing a line... And this yeah. is when it dawned on me, when I thought, okay, well, let's see if the fills are working. Because I really thought, oh, that stink of Windows 8 and yada, yada, right? So I thought, okay, we'll see if the fills are working. And I went like this, and you're going, oh, okay, you know, and I'm hitting enter thinking, I didn't do something, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. everything I could possibly think of. And then I thought, oh, yeah, show stitches, that's right. It's this little icon with this, like, zigzag stitch. Uh -huh. So you see the other one next to it. Mm -hmm. you, you see the one next to it. The 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 stop. Can you right click on that? The, no, the other one. Oh, this one. Show that beads. One. Mm -hmm. Right click on it. Show the ladies there are choices there. No. Yeah. Right start click. beads. Stop beads. Angle eye beads. Corner beads. Letter letter beads. Well, I removed everything but the angle beads, the angle line beads, and wondered why I couldn't see the start <laughs> stop. Y'all don't, I'm, I'm lost. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Meg, I'm coming to Australia. When? Next week. I, are you? Wonderful. I've got no. a bed ready for you. If yeah. she keeps talking about digitizing, I'm going to, I'm going to close up shop. <laughs> See, you need to come over here, Meg, and we're all going to crash Nancy's beach house. <laughs> Yeah, we've talked about this. <laughs> right. Well, when can you come? Uh, I'll, send you 50, I'll, send, I'll send you fifty dollars. We should we, we should do that on the the exercise. Bring Meg to the U.S. fund, right? <laughs> All right, ladies, you ready? Um, yeah, we're going to start go. off yeah. with how we can use our lines. Okay. Now the wing needle. There's. I'm going to start with the wing needle. Okay, there are multiple sizes of wing needles. The one that I used for the examples that I showed you was a 120. Okay, I think it's an 18 slash 120, but there's like a 16 slash 100. And then there's one that's smaller than that. The small one is not dramatic. So if you only want like little tiny holes, you know, the, the one that's like a, you know, 14 whatever, is okay. On babies wear, on babies clothes. Right. It would be something that you just wanted that little texture for. The 100, yeah. the 16100 is okay. It's going to give you some holes. Um, it depends on the fabric, you know, and, you know, of course, the stitch. But the 120 is going to give you the biggest holes. Yep. And I love the 120. I've used the 100. And it's a drastic difference between those two sizes, okay? So just something to keep in the back of your mind. 
Now, I want to look at the lines that we have. So we're going to go to the run tool. Do you guys see my mouse down here? Wait, wait, the markers. I always forget. Here's the markers. Ready? You missed the markers last week. I forgot how to turn them off, Meg. Okay. <laughs> I remembered. I practiced before this one. So there's my run stitch, right? We're going to use this to start because we're making lines. Okay, let me erase that now. Okay, so you select that icon. Now we're in run mode. Okay, now there's two ways to do this. You can make your line and then go back and change it. Or you can select the tool and you get the little squiggly worm, right? Mm -hmm. And go up here and set your, you know, your segment setting windows right here. And go into your stitch settings before you make the line. Either way is fine. Usually I make the line because I forget to do this. So if you do that, don't worry about it. You can always go back and change it. But we're mm -hmm. going to select programmed. Okay. Once we select program, you're going to select from the options that you have. When you look at these, it is showing you these fills based on like it's going to be a filled square, right? Mm -hmm. The first one, when you look at the examples, I'll send you those images over. The first one that I did, okay, that showed, you know, just the little diamonds, mm -hmm. was stitch 204. Mm -hmm. Okay, the second one I did was 205. Now, the difference between what this looks like and what, you know, it looks like in a line is kind of drastic. You have to play with these. Here's my line with that stitch. Big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me change the color so you can see it and go into 3D. Now, the reason I saw holes on this, and this is very difficult to see in the program. This is one of the things that I found a little bit frustrating, but the reason that I was able to see holes in these sections is mm -hmm. that what's really going on is this. I'm just going to grab this tool real quick. You have a back and forth motion like, you know, that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's happening is it goes in and makes the hole here. And then that back motion makes that pull. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need. You need that back motion. So when it's, you know, coming down here, and that back motion makes that hole. Well, if you take a third time down, right, mm -hmm. then you've got the bigger hole. Mm -hmm. You've got pull, and then you've got that, like, a double punch. It's like, you know, when you, um, you know, use a hole punch, and then you use it mm -hmm. again in the same hole, you always get that little extra trim to it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing with the wing needle. When you go back, it's a, it should go back to the original hole, but it's going to push a little bit more open. All right? So mm -hmm. once you play with these, let me get rid of this. Once you play with these fills, these lines, okay, what it's going to give you is a good idea of what a fill will do. So if I've got pull on this, right, then if I do a fill, I'm just going to do a quick little, you know, triangle here. If I do a fill like this, I'm going to auto-close. I'm going to change that fill because I can use these fills as, you know, programmed fills, right? Mm. Let's go find my original pattern, 204. Okay, if, you know, this is going to have pull, this is going to have pull. It's going to have the similar pull to it, right? You're going to have that back and forth thing. But before you commit to this, I would recommend that you do a test stitch because some of the lines are going to behave one way and the fills are going to behave another. All right? Mm. So don't assume that this is going to work exactly the same. And let me show you why. Oh, let me go into the ribbon. All right, I'm going to go all the way back, because this we can see a little bit better what it's doing. 
We can't really see what this is doing very well, but we can kind of watch what's going on with this. Let me kind of scroll forward. See my stitches going? And, you know, you can control that with the in and out point where that line starts. Okay, see how those lines are forming? It's going to try to be, you know, even, but it's going to stitch a little different. It'll give you a little bit of pull, but looking at what I can see on here, it's hard to see until you really stitch it. Looking at what I can see on here, even out of 3D, you know, it's hard to see where that needle's going. I would be tempted to really do a test stitch to make sure that that's going back and forth, back and forth, right? I even tried it with the beads mm -hmm. on, and it's really hard to see. Let me zoom in. It's really hard to see exactly how that's stitching when it's going back and forth over top of something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so always do a test stitch on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I always test stitch anyway. Yeah. Even, even when I'm sewing, I do a test stitch to see if, you know, make sure everything's accurate in the way I want it. That's what I do, too. I had uh, years and years and years ago when I started in embroidery, I heard the best quote, and I wish I could remember who said it. There are two types of stitchers, the ones that test stitch and the ones that wish they had. Yeah. And yes, I'd be one of those that wishes it had. Somehow I could picture Nancy not having enough patience, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I pitched it all the way. Yeah. My quilt is going to be gorgeous. So is mine. <laughs> you wait till you see mine. You're going to want me to make one for you. I do anyway. Is she I'm offering, no quilter. Is she offering to make us a quilt, Meg? I think so, yeah. It sounds like Thank you, Nancy. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> Nancy, I'm this <laughs> <laughs> I miss you so badly. I wish you were next door. <laughs> oh, so do I. All right, Please, ladies, so you ready? I. You ready? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so now I'm going to let you play with these um, numbers, but, you know, let's go ahead and look at another one because there's some things that you really have to look at here on these lines. All right, there's my other line. Wow, that was an odd line, huh? Anyway, let's go in and let's look at this. We're in program still. Now, 206, which if you guys remember, um, I'll show you the picture again, but 206 has a little more pull to it. Okay, this is going to be a little more like, you know, the, the original stitch, the first stitch that we did, 204, is a little bit like the, you know, kind of entredeau pull stitch or joining stitch that you would see, right? Mm. It's not going to be the entredeau like to make the holes yet. But, you know, this stitch is going to give you a little more pull. And I change, you can change the size of these patterns. So this is three millimeters. I'm going to make this like seven just to show some drama. Okay, see how big that is? Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. But you can see what's going on. Let me zoom in. The reason this looks so good is, you know, I didn't obviously use 7 millimeters. But look at what's going on. You've got this hole here. Okay. And then you've got the holes here where it's yeah. like double piercing and at the top here. Okay. So I'm going to go back and show you that picture again to give you an idea. I should have just left this open, huh? To give you an idea of what that looks like. All right, let's zoom in again. And you notice I'm kind of ignoring this stitch because to me that stitch just is awful. But this mm -hmm. stitch, you can see I've got the big holes here. See the bigger holes here? Mm -hmm. But then I've got that big hole on each point too because yeah. of that pull. But my absolute favorite stitch out of all of these, it, when, you, when you see the pictures, it'll make a little more sense. Because when they're zoomed in like this, they just kind of look at, you know. Are you going to let us have a practice time with just one, like you're doing there? Yeah, that'll be part of your homework. I love you. Don't make your homework. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm going to send you a list of the stitches to try. Okay? All right. All right, but when I look at this, my favorite stitches in this 
hole wise like when i look at the the quality of the punching of the holes right the image doesn't show it cuz we're I like the in. one on the end yeah the one down this one right here that one down there yeah this one it's a little different that was one of my least favorites but this one is one of my favorites and believe it or not mm. this one it doesn't look nearly as pretty zoomed in as what it actually looks like mhm mm okay but the reason is because you have consistent piercing you know into the hole even if it's um you know even if it's like this where it's this hole and this hole right but these two holes end up kind of blending together a little bit so you're getting a lot of holy drama how's that mhm mm <laughs> <laughs> let, that, let that show that me how you make that stitch so you can see it while it's stitching. Oh, um, the the draw ribbon. Remember the little clock? Yes. That's the draw ribbon. Remember how I said it makes absolutely no sense that it's like a clock, but that is the draw ribbon. So when you go like that, yeah, because it's in real time. Uh, I I guess, but to me, you know. <laughs> No, it should be a little sewing machine, actually. <laughs> Something, yeah. You know, the, the, it's not even really a clock. It's like a faux but clock it's or not something. doing anything. Well, that's because I have to actually hit the button. This is going to let me do one stitch at a time. Okay? Mine doesn't do anything when I hit those buttons. It just goes zoom from one end to oh, the other. It, it has to do with how you have it set. But if I hit, like, this button to play it, it'll auto-play it for me. Right. Yeah, that's and Meg, look at your crazy. here, because if it's all the way over here, it's like zoom. This is your speed. Yeah, no, it's all the way to the left. <laughs> yeah. See, if it's all the way to the left, then it'll slow down. But, like, you know, whoever did these icons, the draw ribbon thing makes no sense to me here. And somehow, I guess that's supposed to be a folder. But somehow this doesn't yeah. really make, you know, a whole lot of sense next to it. But mm. you can go in and you can say... You know, here's your begin needle, show gray after active. And you can, you know, kind of set some things here to show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see that now. I didn't know you could do that one. Yeah, only show so stitches I haven't played the much window. of that. Yeah. Because yeah. you know what I do? I, I, drag, the, I drag this back. The, the, right. That. Yeah, I yeah. drag that back and watch it undoing. Right, right. That's what I do. But so you can see yeah. I put that gray in. So it shows where the stitches are going to be, and this is going to let you just play one stitch at a time, okay? Right. But to. this will let you go ahead and play forward automatically. And so, and then this is your speed, how fast it plays through. So, but that's what the draw ribbon is. Okay, so now you can see, you know, kind of the concept of what's going on with a wing needle, right? The whole goal of the wing needle is to pierce holes, but I pierce better holes when, any any answers? It repeats. There it you repeats. go. It repeats. it repeats. And what else? What's the first thing we talked about? It repeats Pull. and it pulls back. There you go. Is Pull. that Gloria? Woohoo! Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> See, the, the other lady, <laughs> yeah, the other lady, she can see you're just ignoring me, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to send you a list of stitches to play with, okay? And the words you used? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Nah, well, you that's know okay. I said here that last week <clears throat> when I had downloaded yours and I was checking it to be sure I had downloaded it correctly, and I found myself saying, answering you, just yeah. talking to you. See? <laughs> On the video. <laughs> <laughs> it's like having me in your living room, Nancy. Aren't you thrilled? Oh, I felt like the biggest dummy, and I'd sit there a little bit longer, and yes, I'd find myself saying, yes, Bernie. All right. That's it. And you'd say something to me, and I'd be talking right back to you. Well, be good. I've made an impression. Okay, now, yes. this is my... Bernie? Uh-huh? I have a question. Okay. When when you're doing these stitches, when you're stitching these out, I'm assuming you're doing this in a hoop that is stabilized. Is that correct? Yes, and that's the next thing I need to tell you guys about. Now, I used a lightweight tearaway. 
okay? And the reason is that I want it to be able to pull the fabric, right? So you have to be careful. If, um, if you are going to put a wing needle section in a design that has heavier stitching, you're going to have to, you know, maybe float something heavier underneath that after you do the wing needle section. Or, um, do you, does that make sense to you guys? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Because... Why do you have to put it in a... Why do you have to put it in a hook? To do the embroidery? To do that, yeah. Well, you could do, do it... Stitches. You could do them on your machine. But why you know. do you have to use a, a hook to do those? Well, because you're doing them with embroidery. Oh, you can't do this. Those, these stitches are in the embroidery segment of the machine. Right, right. So no, you know, they're in, in your, they're in your, they're in your software. That's what I was getting at in the first place. Right, they're in well, your they're, software, they're, and they're probably on the exquisite machine. Yeah. Well, I have I don't remember seeing in many of these on the machine. Well, the reason I'm asking, Bernie, <coughs> uh -huh. is last week. I took that um, heirloom stitching class, uh -huh. and they used the um, the heirloom stitches with right. a double a double needle and a uh, rather than a wing needle. Right. You can use. Um, but we did not do a hook. Right. Did you use, you used um, like a wing needle on one side and a straight needle on the other? No. Okay. We used, you used a twin needle. She suggested when you do with the, with the, sink, with the um, exquisite, she suggested to, she did not like to use the wing needle because in heirloom sewing, because oftentimes the fabric was so delicate. Mm -hmm. yeah, that she preferred a just a big needle. Right, you can get like a twenty needle. Yes, but to do what like heirloom when you do did she have you stiffen your fabric? She had us uh doing insert lace inserts mm -hmm. um doing lace uh, putting lace together, like taking one piece of lace and put in side by side and stitching it together. Right, right. And which and is, had, and which yes. is, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Using that, uh, um, oh, that piece of, foot that has that flange right in the very center. Right. You're, it's actually the joining foot. No, it, it's um, the joining foot or the ditch foot. The ditch foot. Right. It's, it mm. originally was called the joining foot. If you were an heirloom person, if you're a quilter, it's the ditch foot. Well, if we, should we use <laughs> the ditch foot. Mm -hmm. The difference is, Nancy, she's teaching you the machine stitches, and Bernie's teaching you how to digitize your own stitches. Right, but even on, <laughs> but even on like the, the heirloom, depending on what type of fabric you were using, you can use the, um, there's, there's a couple of things when I did heirloom sewing that I actually still have some of them. You would stiffen your fabric. Like, you would make it almost board-like with the spray. Yeah, right. so, yeah, it pokes a real hole. Right, and mm -hmm. so that that delicate fabric can hold up, right? Yes. The other thing that you would do is there's a paper that, um, if you guys are interested in it, I, there's one place I know for sure you can still get it. It is the thinnest, easiest to tear away tissue paper, and it comes in different sizes, right? Mm -hmm. So... I still have some rolls of that. When I'm doing decorative or heirloom sewing on the machine, I, I use that. What's it called? Um, <laughs> it, it's, I'll have to look up the name, but I'll, I'll send you guys the one dealer that I know still carries it. But it is it, it, it comes in a little strip 
like maybe about as wide as these stitches, a little bit wider, and then it comes in a, a maybe a five inch roll. And it's not very expensive, but you can use like three layers of it, and you will. It, it's easier to tear away from like sewing machine stitching than your tear away stabler is or stabilizer is. Um, okay. There is a new. Well, it's not new, but Floriani and probably a couple other places have a stabilizer that is a wash away tear away stabilizer. Yeah. And that would and that be is such good stuff. Right. And that's good for heirloom sewing because, you know, these stitches aren't all that beefy when you really look at them. And you don't want to tug on them. You know, so that wash away stabilizer, not not so much the violin, but it's a it's a tear away, so it's thin. It'll let it pull the way it needs to. Mm-hmm. We're seeing somebody oh, on their Megan, video. I love you. Is that Miss Meg? <laughs> Yes. Miss Meg, how, how are Meg? you? <laughs> I'm really good. I wanted to say hello properly. Oh, wait a minute. There's a camera there. I need, I need your hair. Mine is so bushy, and I won't, I won't get on it tonight because I don't want you to see me. Well, yeah. yeah, Gloria, if you do have a webcam, you know, I'll probably allow everybody to do it at the beginning of the, the meeting so everybody can say hi. <laughs> but we have webcam capability here. All right. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, um, Meg, do you want to be my memory? I'm making notes about sending you the dealer link for that heirloom paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Dealer okay. link for heirloom paper. Here's my right. paper. And there you go. There's a paste. But now, when I, I mean, I, this is my personal preference, and you know what I tell you guys all the time. You know, anything that I tell you or another teacher tells you is a guideline, right? Yes. yes. So I probably will never use what she taught us. Well, you might, but I like the wing needle because I, I like drama, and I like big holes. I, if I'm going to punch holes in fabric, then you know, by Lord, God, they better be know big you ones. don't like big holes. <laughs> <laughs> in fabric, I'm Nancy. Waiting. In fabric. <laughs> oh my! <goodness. laughs> I should have thought about that before I said it, but I mean, in fabric, okay? <laughs> you knew Nancy was gonna pick up on that. You know, I'm gonna have to mute. Well, you guys are the only ones seeing these videos, so it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, now you know why the Janome person went into shock, right? Okay, so, now we've got this, okay? And I want you guys to play with these lines, and I'm going to send you a whole bunch of pattern numbers, but I want you to also experiment with some of the other ones, and I want you to experiment with fills, okay? With fills? With fills. I want you, yeah, I want you to make some fills. So let me show you. Um, this is the complex fill tool. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, and you just click on that and just make a square, you know, or, you know, if you want to make a circle, you can right-click and make a circle. But, you know, just make a square, and when you get to that third point, you want to close it. Come up to this icon, which is you called auto-close. Uh -huh. And, and on you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. True. When you hit Enter, Gloria, it's going to ask you to tell it where you want it to start and tell it where you want it to end. And then it, it gives you this little bead. It wants you to tell it the stitch direction. Just drag a line. Okay. Once you get this made, you have to go up to select. And I almost always forget that because I work in different programs, and this is one of the only programs that I have to do this with. You have to go to select and then go to your stitch or segment settings, which is this little TV icon right here. Then you want to look at your programmed fills. Okay, these two, the standard pattern and the carved tile pattern, are no longer relevant once I select um, programmed fill. I have to come down to the program fill pattern. And then select from the patterns in here. You know, I'll give you some guidelines, but like I can look at some of these and tell you this is not going to be a good pattern. It might be interesting. You'd have to play with it. But this is definitely not going to be a good pattern. Anything with a satin stitch in it is not going to be 
in particularly a good pattern because it's too many holes being poked in one place. You know, you want to stick with something like this or, you know, something like this. You know, um, you know, play with a couple of them, but like this would not be a good wing needle design. 208 would be all right, wouldn't it? 208 would be good. But C207... We've got, haven't we got that on the, the expressive, and on the machine itself, I think? Yeah, it's a little bit different than on the machine. Is it? But, no, I haven't stitched it. So. Yeah, but see, this one would not be good because you've mm -hmm. got those little satin stitches. So picture your wing needle poking a whole bunch of holes in the same spot. But, you know, go ahead and select that and just say OK. And just make squares that don't take you all day to sew out. Now, when okay. using a wing needle on the expressive machine, you should not use your um, thread trimmer, your automatic mm. thread trimmer. Yes. You should not use it for any of the machines technically. Mm. Okay. Wait, you say that one more time. Now, when you say thread trimmer, you're talking about the one that the yeah, the automatic automatically like, cuts it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with that being said, when I was with Singer, when I was with Elna, it didn't damage the machines. I think it's just more of you know a manufacturer's worry that it might. Um, but you know that's something to kind of tuck in the back of your head. The automatic needle threader will not work. What I do for the exquisite is I take the needle out and I let the machine pretend it's threading. And then mm -hmm. I put the needle in and thread the needle manually. But at least the thread's drawn all the way f through for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you don't use the, when you're using the wing needle, you do not use the thread trimmer. You should not use it. You should not. But, like I said, when we were with Singer and Elna, we used it. It didn't damage the machine. I think it's more of a machine manufacturer caution kind of thing. Some of the machines, you can't. Some of them you will damage, like the Brother and the Baby Lock machines, depending on the model, because of how it trims the thread. Okay. Okay? So you're better safe mm -hmm. than sorry not to use that automatic thread trimmer. And you can turn that off on your machine. How? Um, if you go into... Hmm, let me think. I'm trying to remember the icon. There's an icon that it looks like the book, right? Is it the book that get, lets you get into the settings? Yeah, yeah. And once you get into the settings, you'll see your automatic bobbin winder. You'll see your thread trimmer. Um, it's literally the book on your, I'm looking in my manual right now. It's literally the book on that, on that screen. It's got like the flip okay. page, like one side's yellow. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Once you get into that, then you have to go to, it looks like the tension setting slider, uh -huh. and you'll see all the different settings. You don't want to change all of those settings other than to turn the scissors on or off. Um, if you have any questions on that or you can't find it, um, email me, and I'll see if I can hunt down the instructions from the manual. Well, I've got the manual. I should be able to find it. Yeah, it literally looks like it's it's got a hand on it. It's literally the slider thing. And you'll see, like, your beep sound and all that other stuff. And then there's a section for your bobbin and a section for scissors. So, all right. So. Can't you just turn it on and off with the button, too? <laughs> um, you know what? You might be able to. I'm not in front you know of my machine. You know the button on the machine? I think yeah. You, I I'm, think you can. I think I'm I almost sure you can. Yeah. Not with embroidery, you can't. No? If you're doing it from the embroidery part, you can. Yeah, I'm, you I'm have thinking, to go yeah. Threading to do it the thread germ. Yeah. Okay, now I we're. use the machine for a while. We're going to go on <laughs> and we're going to look at doing some entredeau. Okay? Like, literally punching holes and stuff. And I want to find the one picture I saved it somewhere, if I can find it of really what Entredeau is, because we have to get on to all of these things yet, too. Um, Entredeau is... Thank you, darling. Mm, hold on. Oh, I just got a cup of tea. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can find it real quick, because I know I pulled a picture off just to give you guys of what Entredeau looked like. Okay, let's look at this. Um, 
My mouse on this webinar just seems to be jerky jerky. Okay. On Trudeau, see these little squares right here? Yes. That is on Trudeau. And yeah, it's beautiful. And mm. see this this little sign right here, the old fashioned baby? That mm. is a website that still carries a lot of insertion lays and on Trudeau. But this mm. is what the goal of us learning to make on Trudeau is. We're going to make our own insertions because what goes on, let me zoom in a little bit, if you've never done heirloom sewing, is see these holes? You're going to basically stitch over this section here and attach it to like lace or the edge of a fabric. Mm. This little extra piece here um, really ends up trimmed very short when you're all done. But as a matter of fact, we're going to make an example similar to this today. This is going to be also your homework. But I wanted to show you that picture. There's all kinds of different entredo, which I thought I had saved another picture, but maybe not. Okay. So anyway, just kind of tuck that in the back of your head. It's this edge right here. Let me go back to the marker. This edge right here. And this one down here. That's what the entrego is. And you set your needle to go in between each one of those holes. Well, when you're attaching it, what you're doing is you're generally you're using a little zigzag to attach, right? Did yes. she show you the zigzag? So it's just going to go over top of this piece, this bar, basically. But, but your needle goes in that hole. Right. You you might end up here. You know, generally you're going to try to hit here to attach. And it's just a decorative way of attaching. All right? Let me use my yes. eraser. Otherwise, we'll have these little yellow things all Actually, over the place. There's a, there's a good stitch on the machine for that, and I think they use it for overlocking. Mm hmm Yeah, there's... Got the, yeah. If you so look on your exquisite machine, there's a section that says H for heirloom. And there's a lot of different things in there, but don't discount some of the other stitches. You know, there's, like Meg said, there's the one that, you know, you use for, um, like, an Overlocking. edge stitch. Yeah. Right. So, basically, what you want to do is, a lot of times what you're going to see is you're going to have the straight stitch running down here. You know, there's the yep. straight stitch, and then it's, like, just almost like a blind stitch catching it. Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. It's a crisscross, though, that right. I'm thinking of. And, right. and because you can reverse the stitch now, you can use it for both sides. Right. And what yeah, it looks it's, like it's is... Really, I use it a lot. Yeah, it looks something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and yeah. if, since you can flip it, uh -huh. what Meg's talking about is she'd be going like this. Well, I'm going back. Right. Yeah. You know, like this, okay? Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told you guys I'm left-handed, but I mouse right-handed, correct? So <laughs> now you, you know why it hand. looks like that. I think you should try your left hand. <laughs> uh, you know what? I just cannot mouse with my left hand. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, so let me go ahead and clear this off. I have to move that out of the way and get a new file. I'm going to get rid of that message. I'm not quite sure when that message came into effect, but... Okay, so, on Trudeau. Now, we want to make... For on Trudeau, you're not doing like the little wavy thing generally. You're generally doing straight segments to insert lace or to insert, you know, a like a decorative border in between. So we can use one of the tools in the program to make sure that all of our stuff is very straight. And that is, we go into view, we have our grid settings. Okay, so there's my grid settings, show grid, and then there's this little thing called snap to grid. So first I want to go to grid settings because we're going to use these a little bit today. Okay, my horizontal spacing, I am in millimeters. If you are in inches, 
this will drive you out of your ever-loving mind. So if you happen to get here and you're in inches, cancel and go back over to your tools and configuration and change your user settings. Okay, here's the user settings screen. Um, I put my tool, my buttons to large this time so you could see them a little bit better. Um, environment, you know, ignore that. Print setting, you can actually change the things in here if you want to, you know, this is your print template. User preferences is what you want. See where I put my company name right here? That will now show up on my printouts rather than Elna something something, right? Down here, units of measurements, metric. Why do you want to go into metric? Well, your grid on your embroidery hoops is at millimeters. Your embroidery hoops are measured in millimeters. You don't have to learn the metric system, but it's a whole lot easier to know that your hoop is 240 millimeters by 140 millimeters than 5 by, you know, a little more than 5 and almost 7, right? It's just more precise and it's easier to work with. Down here, embroidery settings. It is so much easier to look at your thread density, your stitch lengths in millimeters because that's what you're already used to. Your stitch settings on your sewing machine are in millimeters. Three, you know, 3.0 is a three millimeter length stitch. Okay. The same thing with density. Like if you're in empirical, or points, like a, a, you could use points. Some of the older digitizers use points. We we generally don't. Uh, you know, 40 weight thread. You know that that's almost or pretty close to equal to uh, you know point or a 40 uh, point four density. I think is how it shows up here. But it just makes it so much easier than trying to figure out the stitches per inch that you need for proper fill. So this is where you would change your settings. Okay, once you have those changed, then go back into your view and then your grid settings. Okay, in my grid settings, we aren't going to make a 10 millimeter hole for our entredeau. We're not going to do it. So we might want to change this down to maybe 5. Let's try 5 to start with. We're just going to change to 5. I could change my grid color if I really wanted to, but usually, you know, this color is a pretty good color to leave it at, right? Okay, um, major grid. This is like graph paper. You know, how, you know, how highlighted do you want this every 5 or every, you know, 10 or, you know, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is right now. But if you wanted to highlight something so you could measure things better, you would say, you know, horizontal every so many lines, and you would make this a different color. It's a little bit darker than this. It's not significantly darker. Solid lines, dashed lines, or dots. I'm going to leave mine at solid because it's fairly light. But, you know, I could pick dashed lines if I wanted, or I could just pick dots. It depends on your, your personal preferences. Now, snap to grid. If I pick snap to grid, everything is going to snap to a point on this grid. And that's what we want for what we're going to do. So I'm going to select snap to grid, snap to style. Do I want to snap to a corner? Do I want to snap to a center? Let's go with the corner. If center is literally right here. And we're not going to need that right now. So we're going to go ahead and say corner and say OK. Now, there's a smaller grid size. It's a usable grid. I can still resize my design after I'm done, right? But mm -hmm. I want to make some entredo edging. And you know, the easiest way to do that in this program truly is going to be using this steel tool. You'll bounce between the steel tool and this tool. Steel tool and the running stitch. And the running stitch. Now, if you wanted to get real fancy, you could actually do the enhanced column. But I can control this so that it's the same width all the way across. Mm. So it yeah. just makes life so much easier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick, uh, we kind of went through the colors in our review, but I'll, I'll review them a little bit more. This blue is very difficult to see, and most of us are not using navy. 
but we still want to be able to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and change this color. And to do that, Gloria, I come down and see this number one down here. Mm -hmm. I right click on it and say thread change. Okay. Okay, and then I come up and here's my, my thread chart dialog. I can pick whatever brand I use. And I'm a Robinson Anton fan, so I'm going to go ahead and, and go with the Robinson Anton. That's what I use. Yeah, I like Robin's and Anton. And then you can pick whatever mm. color you want. I, I like to be able to see things on the screen, so I know like this range is pretty good. The darker yeah. colors are difficult. So I'm gonna go ahead and eh, we'll make it we'll make it a light blue. So then I say okay, and you can see that changes now. So that's gonna be my, my color that I'm gonna use. I could come over and pick any of the other ones, but I'm gonna I'll use the number seven. Use number seven. Yeah, it does make yeah, it easier. Because it's a bit brighter to see. <laughs> yeah, we'll but see. You can how still see all your blue dots and stuff. Yeah, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I might end up going over to seven. Okay, so I'm going to just make a little entredeau section. And this is going to be the bulk of your homework, this entredeau. And we're going to do a couple other things because we have a lot to get through yet. Okay, hem stitching. Entredeau, they're kind of the same, so I can cover these both at the same time. And I'm going to zoom in because, you know, I decided to get one of those big giant monitors, so my little squares look like little itty-bitty dots. Okay, this is the steel tool. This is hem stitching. Okay, um, how many of you guys know what hem stitching is? Me. Okay. I don't. Okay, hem stitching is when you have... Um, you know when you see like the edge of something and it's fringed out in between things? Yeah. Okay, it's drawn thread work. Well, they use hem stitching a lot. And there was an original Elna stitch that um, was phenomenal for hem stitching. Now, to be honest, for this one, I would go back and in view and I would go into my um, grid setting. And you remember that halfway stitch, that center? We're going to go for the center and see if this does what I think it does. If I start here, okay, see how it's starting in the middle? Uh, it's still going to do the snap, too. Okay, so it doesn't make any difference. Hold on. I thought it was going to do something different than it did. Let me go back. We'll just stick with the uh, regular setting on the corner. All right, so hem stitching. Good hem stitching goes something like this. Okay, there's my first section, right? Mm -hmm. Second section. Third section. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a handful of these. This is good hem stitching. Why this is good hem stitching, I'll explain in a second. But I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these so I can just left click and hold and select them all. Let me get rid of these beads. And I'm gonna Ah, come on. I'm going to, well, I'll have to turn off my grid. I would generally shrink these down, but see how I have this line going across? I need to change that. So I'm going to put my beads back on, and I'm going to zoom in closer. Maybe not quite that close, huh? Okay, now... What I need to do is, this is where I start and this is where I end. See my jump stitch coming down? I'm going to mm. take that up there. And I can just go to each bead and just move it. So see where my line is going straight across, right? Even this one, I'm going to go ahead and take it up. Okay, so I've made my row of these little stitches and I'm just jumping over to the next one, coming back. So I've got this little support line coming down here now which we'll look at with our sequence player here, or our ribbon here. Okay, watch what's going to happen. Oh, wow, that's awful fast. I even went slow. All right, I'll go like this. See what's happening is there's my, my run stitch down. Jump over. It's going to do that for every single one of those now. Okay, does that make sense to you guys now? Yes. Okay, so I end right about here. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to select my steel tool again and I'm going to come over to the edge and I'm going to make a line. Well, maybe I'm making a line. Hold on. 
There we go. There's my line. And it's probably going to go to, all the way to that grid, but... Okay. This is... It's trying to go from this over to here to this grid, so we'll, I'll show you how to adjust that in a second. But see how I'm overlapping that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, once I've got this taken care of, now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to really go to View, Grid Settings, and I'm going to turn off that Snap to Grid. I need to get the basics done because I want them nice and even. So those are all snap, or those are all done now. Okay, now what I need to do is adjust this. And if that bead's in your way, see my bead? Just turn off the beads right here. Let me zoom in. Power edit. Yeah, I guess I could power edit, but really, to me, I, I the power... Yeah, the power edit is not too, too bad, but I'm going to pull that down like that, and I'll show you what Meg's talking about, the power edit. I almost, oh, I'm batting a thousand on my Zoom tools today, huh? Mm-hmm. Power yeah. edit. Okay, power edit is going to give you that, see how it's, it's stretching out from the center? Both ends, yeah, it'll do both ends at the it'll same time. It'll do both ends at the same time, so... Um, I've got that little drag over there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. See if it'll let me undo back that far. Hold on. You yeah, should. Sure. Select. Don't forget to select from the power oh, edit. Yeah, I always forget that. Okay, there we go. I do too. <laughs> I know. Isn't that terrible? And, you know, it, okay, power <laughs> edit. <laughs> so if you're even like this, you can stretch it out like that. Okay. Okay, that's one way to do it. Now, we have these pieces down here. If I'm doing a true hem stitch, these are going to be a little bit long, even though they're very small. See how small they are? Uh -huh. Okay, these are going to be a little bit too long for the hem stitch. So, I'm going to go back to my view, and here's this, my favorite thing in the whole world, my sequence view. Sequence, yep. Okay, so here's sequence view, and Everything is lake blue, right? So I'm going to hit the plus symbol over here. And it's telling me here's all my steel tool, or all my steel stitches. Now, this is the one I want to guard, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off for right now. See the little eyeball? It's like that yeah. red eye commercial. I just click on that to turn it off. Okay. And this is, this is a handy little thing, because if I'm trying to select these lines... Sometimes I get them, sometimes I don't. But if I want to make sure I get them all, I just come over here and left-click on the first one and then hold my Shift key and left-click on the last one that I want to edit. And I just want to shrink these up a little bit. So now they're all selected, I can shrink them up about a little less than halfway, maybe. Can you see that? Can you guys see that that little? Hold on. You, wait, you guys don't have good eyes? I'm just shocked. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> blind. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. Okay, so here we go. So now I've got to be patient when I come over here, and I've got all of these selected. I have to be patient that I get the arrow. I don't deselect everything, so that I can adjust it. So I want to go up about mm, maybe a little more than half, a little less than halfway. And then I'm going to turn this back on. Okay, so now we're going to pretend that we have this big long line. But what's going to happen is this. When I'm doing hem stitching, let me do one more thing. Hold on. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste. And I want to change that color so I know what they are. Okay, here's my original ones. And then here's the copy up here. That is so weird, isn't it, that they're actually... Let me hide these. Okay, there they are. So now, this is when you go into your reflect. And I just want to show you guys this real quick. At the top. Okay, now... Are you doing it on top? Ah, okay. Yep. Okay, so now this isn't the way we're going to do this, but I want to show you something. 
Okay, when I'm doing hem stitching, 